An historic local community is making big plans for this summer and fall. Plant lovers are invited to a program later this week, and Taylor Swift fans are in for a treat Friday night. A couple of mostly dry days in store for East Alabama, then rainfall returns before the week is done. We'll have a complete forecast details for all of East Alabama coming up. Coming up in sports, we have an update on the state baseball championship games from Jacksonville State University. We also have an update on the AHSA softball state tournament at Chakalaka Park as EAN Local News starts now. This segment of EAN Local News is brought to you by Waldrop Manufacturing, metal buildings made right here in Calhoun County. Hello, we're glad you could join us. I'm Katie Edwards. Mike Stedham has the evening off. Hobson City, Alabama's oldest African-American town, will celebrate its 125th birthday this year with a number of programs and events. Mayor Alberta McCrory says these are being organized by the Hobson City Community Enhancement Committee, which was formed last year to promote activities that celebrate the town and its heritage. Well, I'm excited, first of all, about this enhancement group that has come forth and is helping to move things forward in Hobson City. They're really shaking up things and really have a good group of people that's working. Uh, they have the uh, jamboree that's coming up on the 18th of May. And then they have Juneteenth that's coming up on the 29th of June. In August, the committee will oversee the 125th Founders Day celebration, marking the incorporation of Hobson City. Mayor McCrory says the group is working on an even bigger event for November when it will bring an evening of sports and entertainment to a local venue. Committee member Russell Sanderson says the program will star the Harlem Legends. Primarily uh, former Harlem Globetrotter basketball players, but also involves NFL uh, and NBA, as well as other professional athletes and Olympic athletes to make up their, to make up their group. Uh, they're gonna bring a dozen players here for this exhibition basketball game on November the 9th, the afternoon of November the 9th. As a lead into that game, uh, there'll be a formal announcement by Michael Douglas here in Hobson City on August the 7th, where he will be really championing the game, explaining it in great detail. I think he's got a bunch of giveaways to give to the kids uh, while he's out there explaining everything. Another member of the Community Enhancement Committee, Elizabeth Rowe, says the Harlem Legends program is a good example of what a community can accomplish when its people work together. It's like the village program because we got the children involved, we got the church involved, we got the community involved, and we're just looking for a great time at Oxford Civic Center. They're going to play the game down there. So you all come. It's the little boy can say, y'all come. We'll be looking for you. When we come back, free comic books are being offered to area teens. For metal buildings in Alabama and the Southeast, Waldrop Manufacturing is your one-stop source. A Waldrop metal building provides the coverage and protection your investments need. They specialize in carports, RV covers, portable buildings, and storage buildings. Stop paying rent for storage. With Waldrop's price per foot, you can actually save money by buying straight from the manufacturer. Waldrop buildings are guaranteed because Waldrop manufactures buildings with U.S. Steel right here in Calhoun County. Waldrop Manufacturing, serving the entire Southeast. Give them a call today. This segment of EAN Local News is brought to you by Oxford Lumber. Come visit any of our locations in Oxford, Jacksonville, Talladega, and Roanoke. Comic book fans in the Anniston area are invited to the Public Library Thursday to celebrate Free Comic Book Day 2024. From 8.30 a.m. to 6 p.m., teenagers are invited to visit the Young Adult Department at the library to pick up a free comic book of their choice. Whether they're fans of superheroes, manga, graphic novels, or other genres, there will be a diverse selection of titles available for them to choose from. Free Comic Book Day is an annual celebration that takes place at participating comic book shops and libraries across the country. It aims to promote the enjoyment and appreciation of comic books while also encouraging literacy and a love for reading among readers of all ages. 
This month's third Thursday event at the Anniston Museum and Gardens will focus on the topic of cut flowers, offering residents and visitors alike a unique opportunity to delve into the world of cut flowers. Joining the Longleaf Botanical Gardens for this event is Chilton County Extension Coordinator Lucy Edwards. She will guide attendees through the intricacies of cut flower gardening, sharing insights from her own experience. Designed especially for beginner gardeners with a passion for flowers, the presentation will teach participants how to incorporate cut flowers into their landscape beds and vegetable gardens. The program will also offer practical tips and expert advice to help attendees cultivate thriving and sustainable gardens at home. The event runs from noon until 3 o'clock p.m. and admission is $5 per person with free entry for Anniston Museum members. When we come back, get ready for some Taylor Swift. For over 60 years, Oxford Lumber has been servicing our area and our customer service has always been our main focus. Our customer service is what sets us apart from anyone else. From the moment you enter, our highly trained staff will treat you like family. To enthusiastically provide total customer satisfaction within a positive and self-fulfilling employee relations environment. Visit us at any of our four locations or at OxfordLumber.com. This segment of EAN Local News is brought to you by WM Grocery, located in Heflin, Wadawi, Roanoke, and in Piedmont. The parking lot of the new Jacksonville City Hall will be the site of this month's third Friday movie night, featuring a free showing of Taylor Swift, The Eras Tour, sponsored by Air Medic. City officials recommend bringing lawn chairs or blankets, and bathrooms will be available inside the City Hall lobby. By the way, The Eras Tour is a PG-13 film with some strong language and some adult content, so parental discretion is advised. We now turn to John Holder, who joins us in the EAN Weather Center for the latest look at what's happening in our local weather. John? Katie, the weather is going to turn pretty nice for the next couple of days, a return to summertime temperatures before more rainfall by the end of the week. We will have a complete forecast for all of East Alabama next. Spring into freshness at WM. Celebrate the season with our bountiful selection of farm fresh produce. From juicy berries to crisp greens, taste the flavors of spring at WM. Visit us today and let the freshness bloom in every bite. A mix of clouds and sunshine today across East Alabama. Temperatures actually a little bit below the average for this time of year. 76 for the high, 64. A very warm morning this morning. You see the record high temperature of 93, the record low 41. Our sun setting tonight at 737 and the sunrise on your Wednesday morning, 542. Weather on your street now for this Tuesday night. We've got some showers and storms in the forecast. Bells Mill Road in Heflin. Get ready for about a 50-50 chance of showers. We've got a severe thunderstorm watch up in northwest Alabama. Some of those storms could make their way into east Alabama before the night is done. Chance of rain in any location today or tonight, I should say, about 1 and 2. 61 for the low tonight. Coming up tomorrow, the shower and thunderstorm activity kind of thinning out tomorrow, to be honest honest with you. An afternoon, uh, afternoon storm or two on Hughes Street in Piedmont will rise into the upper 70s tomorrow. About a 30% chance of a shower or thunderstorm with the heating of the day in any one location. All in all, not bad for your Wednesday. As we look ahead to the rest of the work week across East Alabama, the big story is the rainfall returning on Friday to Cedar Bend Road in Southside. Over on the river there in Etowah County, you can expect temperatures to be in the 80s on Thursday with the clouds coming in here in the rainfall on Friday, high temperatures falling back into the 70s. Our best chance of rain actually is coming up on Friday. We're going to have a dry day on Thursday. Temperatures will bounce back into the mid 80s. By Friday, we're back in the upper 70s, an 80% chance of showers and thunderstorms. Looks like a wet day right now. Saturday and Sunday, this is your typical summertime weather pattern. Going to be warm, going to be humid a little bit. Temperatures will be in the low to mid 80s, about a 30 to 40 percent chance of an afternoon shower or thunderstorm, mainly with the heating of the day, just like we would see in June, July, and August here in Alabama. Those uh, showers and thunderstorms continue to thin out, just a 20 percent chance on Monday, with highs getting into the upper 80s. And then by Tuesday of next week, and it looks like 
for the rest of the work week as we look way ahead to about 7 to 10 days out. We're going to be seeing things really heat up. Temperatures getting close to 90 degrees and drying out as well. Let's take a look at what we can expect coming up tonight across East Alabama. And to be honest with you, the highest chance of rain in North and Central Alabama, apart from that severe thunderstorm watch in the northwest corner of the state, is actually going to be right here for us in Northeast Alabama. The further northeast you go, the higher the rain chances. Again, rain chances tonight going to be about 50 to 60 percent for most locations here in East Alabama. As you go to the southwest, those amounts will be falling off drastically. So get ready for another round of showers and thunderstorms coming up at some point in the overnight hours tonight. I'll be back here tomorrow morning, bright and early 6 a.m. We will detail your Wednesday at a glance, and then I'll be back here tomorrow evening with EAN Local News as we continue to fine tune the forecast for the rest of the work week and the weekend for all of East Alabama. High school baseball and softball state championships continuing right here in East Alabama. Our very own Namath Pitts camped out today at Jacksonville State University. Here's Namath with sports. Thanks, John. The Alexandria Valley Cubs won game one yesterday against Mobile Christian, which puts them one win away from being crowned the Class 5A state champions. Both teams were strong on the bump yesterday here at Ruby Abbott Field in Jacksonville, but Alexandria was just a little bit stronger as they defeated Mobile Christian 2-1. Zach McKinnon started the game for Mobile Christian and recorded 18 outs. A hit by pitch is what gave Alexandria the lead in the bottom of the first. A ground out by Aiden Bruner extended the Alexandria lead to 2-0. Andrew Allen earned the win for Alexandria. He allowed three hits and one run over seven innings while striking out 11 and walking three. McKinnon took the loss from Mobile Christian. He went six innings, surrendering two runs on three hits while striking out one and walking one. Alex Bennett led Mobile Christian with one RBI. Damian Gatson, Carson Cooper, and Chandler Carpenter each collected one hit apiece for Mobile Christian. Eli Barnes led Alexandria with one RBI. Evan Snow, Nick Thompson, and Ian Cartwright each collected a hit for Alexandria. Alexandria did not commit a single error in the field. Bruner had the most chances in the field with 12. While Alexandria is trying to win a state baseball championship tonight, the AHSA softball state tournament is taking place at Chakalaka Park. Let's check in and see how our local teams are doing, starting with Oxford. Oxford fell in the opening game of the state tournament as they lost 2-1 to one to Hillcrest Tuscaloosa. The game was tied at one in the top of the eighth inning when Jamie Hugley hit a solo home run to center field. The pitching was strong on both sides. Hillcrest's pitcher struck out seven while Berkeley Mooney sat down 11. A sack fly by Ashlyn Burns gave Oxford the lead in the first. Jewel Brooks singled, which helped Hillcrest tie the game in the top of the third. Mackenzie Harper got the win for Hillcrest Tuscaloosa. She gave up zero hits and zero runs over four innings while striking out six and walking four. Berkeley Mooney took the loss for Oxford. She went eight innings, giving up two runs on eight hits while striking out 11 and walking three. Brooke Matthewson stepped in the circle for Hillcrest Tuscaloosa. The righty surrendered two hits and one run, zero earned over four innings while striking out one and walking three. Reagan Sanders and Adeja Wilson each collected a hit for Oxford. Burns led Oxford with one RBI. They had a strong eye at the plate for Hillcrest Tuscaloosa. Nickel Dockery and Hewley each collected two hits. Brooks and Hewley each drove in one run for Hillcrest Tuscaloosa. Let's move to Class 4A. Cherokee County took the field yesterday. Unfortunately, though, the Warriors saw their season come to an end. Cherokee County won their opening game against Prattville Christian, but then fell to Orange Beach, which put them in the elimination bracket where they fell to Brooks and saw their season come to an end. Cherokee County just couldn't keep up with Brooks. Brooks was the first to get on the board in the first when Presley Bunch hit a sack fly. Abby Herndon earned the win for Brooks. The left-handed pitcher gave up four hits and zero runs over seven innings while striking out six and walking one. Emma Hill took the loss for Cherokee County. She went seven innings, giving up six runs on 12 hits while striking out six and walking two. Grayson Tucker and Abby Lee each collected two hits for Cherokee County. The Warriors did not commit a single error, but it would, be not, would not be enough as Brooks had 12 hits in the game. Faith Robertson, Adriana Johnson, Carly Moreland, and Herden each collected two hits for the Brooks Varsity Lions. Brooks won 6-0 as Cherokee County saw their season come to an end. Thanks for that update, Namath, and we thank you for watching today. You can find us here online every weekday on Facebook and YouTube and other sources, including the Calhoun Journal and Newsbreak. 
Go to the platform of your choice and watch our news, sports, and weather content whenever it's convenient for you. We'll see you back here Wednesday for your news on your schedule.